The months following the Civil War and the start of Reconstruction offered African Americans in the South hope for equality. It also offered the possibility of owning land. Within months, African Americans would be betrayed by a harsh reality. You probably heard the phrase 40 acres and a mule. Here's what happened. In January 1865, a meeting in Savannah, Georgia, between Union military leader General William Tecumseh Sherman and a group of 20 black ministers resulted in a plan to redistribute confiscated and abandoned Confederate land from South Carolina to Florida. They called the land Sherman's Reserve. Newly freed slaves would be allocated 40 acres of land along with a mule. The phrase, which became well known even then, spread quickly. The plan had the potential to revolutionize race relations in the South and the economic future of the African American community. The significance about formerly enslaved being given the land that they had actually worked was that they would be able to generate wealth as well as create wealth generationally. By the summer of 1865, thousands of black families had settled on portions of the Sherman Reserve and were excited to plot their futures. But later that year, as part of his reconstruction plan actually intended to appease the former Confederacy, President Andrew Johnson abruptly canceled the order, giving the land back to its previous owners. The United States had the opportunity to make it possible for the formerly enslaved people to be economically independent, and the country failed to do it. That initial meeting more than 100 years ago between General Sherman and Savannah's leading black ministers was historic. At least for a brief moment in history, the opinion of black leaders had led directly to a radical public policy initiative. Remarkably, over a century and a half later, on June 19, 2019, the House of Representatives held a hearing on H.R. 40, a bill named in honor of the famous phrase, 40 acres and a mule. The bill would establish a commission to study the concept of reparations for slavery and Jim Crow segregation, including the merits of a formal apology by the United States government. 